Це мораль, кажуть так. Це спрямовано обирала, тому що я вперше подорожую з двома дівчатами, з двома дівчатами. Тому мені було, я коли помала, як я буду їхати, то мені було трошки неспокійно. Коли я побачила, що є, з'явилися в продажі такі квитки, я одразу припала в значку. Але інколи інтереси не співпадають, тому нам краще з дівчатами. Це вже на першій хвилині, я вже відчула, що у мене дуже гарний колектив і мені дуже приємно їхати. Тому я дуже рада. За сьогодні я рада. Слабері і її легасі є важливі історії, які вчити, і є важливі історії в моїй сім'ї. Журналіст Дона Брайсон вирішила вирішити про вчитинг слабері. And with help from her father, she sought to look at how her family's personal history dovetails with some of the U.S.'s bleakest moments. And I started to think about all the teachers in my family, starting with my grandmother, but there's a lot of them. Her cousins, her, her sister, even my father has taught in his time. Bryson's exploration is part of a larger Reuters project looking at the ancestral connections of slavery to America's political elite. It comes at a fraught moment in the U.S. where teaching history is both polarized and political. In Florida, for instance, Governor Ron DeSantis has led efforts to limit what is taught about racism in his state schools. We fight the woke in, in schools. We in Florida will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. The governor's office pointed Reuters to the state's education department which notes students do learn about slavery, the Civil War, and Jim Crow law. Others say the country's dark moments cannot be glossed over. Parents and teachers say they're caught in the middle. Bryson's journey took her to this roadside marker in rural Georgia. It commemorates the lynching of two black couples in 1946, including a woman who was seven months pregnant. Her Georgia-born father, Andrew, now 86, recalls witnessing it as a nine-year-old boy. I just saw a bunch of people shooting and, and yelling and just they were probably high or something or whatever. But, uh, and, and, and I was, you know, I, I guess there's an age at which you're too stupid to be afraid. Maybe that's what it was. Bryson says her family also knows the pain of racial violence all too well. So, I was wondering if you can tell me how you came to have this book and where it came from. This was one of the ledgers they used, and the store was on Pigeon Street. I think it's Martin Luther King Jr. Drive now. In the 1930s, Jim Crow laws and segregation ruled the South. This is Bryson's great-grandfather's grave marker. He died after white men pulled him from his store, according to her father. It sort of tarred and feathered him because apparently he was competition for the stores a feed store and something else downtown. When it came time to investigate my own family, there was kind of a dearth of documentation, uh, which is true of a lot of African-American families. It, you, it's hard to get past the 1870 census because African-Americans were not named in the censuses before that. Still, Bryson says there are also reasons for optimism. She's proud of her family's resiliency and her father believes his own educator mother would have something to say about the current climate in the U.S. What do you think your mother would make of these attempts to 
restrict what's taught and what's read. But what would she think of it? Mm -hmm. She was bold and uh, outspoken, and if she saw something she felt was wrong, she would say so. Uh, she would say that there's always a way. deadly raid on the city of Janine, one of the biggest Israeli operations in the occupied West Bank in two decades. Israel used drone strikes on Monday for only the second time since 2006. Hundreds of its troops were also involved in long gun battles. The Janine Brigades, a unit made up of militant groups based in a crowded refugee camp, said it was engaging Israeli forces and had shot down one of the drones. Meanwhile, Israeli armoured bulldozers ploughed up roads in the camp, as this video shows, interrupting city water supplies. The camp has been at the heart of an escalation of violence across the West Bank that has triggered mounting alarm from Washington to the Arab world. Palestinian medic Salah Mansour said they'd treated critically injured people inside the camp. As medics, we're anxious because the Israeli strikes don't differentiate between medics or civilians or members of the resistance. The Israeli raid today was a very tough one. It was tough for medics as well as civilians who were inside the camp. There are many cases of women who were suffocating, pregnant women. And we treated many people who were having panic attacks. An Israeli military spokesperson said Monday's operation deployed a brigade-sized force, suggesting around 1,000 to 2,000 troops. It showed the growing importance of the camp, where hundreds of fighters from militant groups, including Hamas, Islamic Jihad and Fatah, are based, with an array of weapons and a growing arsenal of explosive devices. The Israeli military said it struck a building that served as a command center for fighters from the Janine brigades. Army raids in Janine and other West Bank cities have grown frequent in the past year. Alongside a series of deadly attacks by Palestinians against Israelis and rampages by Jewish settler mobs against Palestinian villages. Leon Gauthier the last surviving member of a French commander unit that waded ashore on D-Day has died. He celebrated his 100th birthday last October. Gauthier was one of 177 French soldiers who stormed the Normandy beaches to fight against Hitler's forces alongside Allied troops. Reuters spoke with a national hero at his house in 2019, several hundred feet from the remnants of a German bunker. He still grappled with the violence of war. I think the first thing is to preserve peace. Do what it takes to keep the peace. Because war is a misery. It ends with widows and orphans. War is a misery. Not all that long ago, and perhaps you find this silly, but I would think perhaps I killed a young lad. Perhaps I orphaned children. Perhaps I widowed a woman or made a mother cry, I don't know. And that, I didn't want to do that. I'm not a bad man, do you see what I mean? In this war, there are widows, mothers, children who cry and unfortunately, you kill a man who's done nothing to you. Gauthier recalled how he had been too young to join the army when Hitler's forces occupied France in World War II, so he enrolled in the Navy. He was on board one of the last French warships to sail for Britain to join the three French forces of General de Gaulle as the Germans swept across the northern half of France in 1940. French President Emmanuel Macron has described Gauthier and his comrades as heroes of the liberation.